Now, the National Museum of African Art recently held a press preview uh, featuring the photography and collection of Eliot Elisophone, a celebrated Life magazine photographer, a man who loved African culture and presented it to the world. VOA's Caroline Turner has more. The work is the result of 30 years of the artist's travels, photography, collecting, writing, and filmmaking in Africa. Called Africa Reviewed, the exhibit features works of art from Elisofen's personal and professional collection, from his innovative photography of African sculptures to intimate portraits of everyday life. Everything from the political intensity of independence to the grandeur of nature. At the entrance to the exhibit, Elisofen's philosophy is on display. Photography has enriched my life. It has enabled me to travel to almost every corner of the globe using my camera as a magic carpet to see and study the meaning and beauty of civilizations and environments besides my own. This year marks the 40th anniversary since the artist donated his extensive collection to the museum. Over 7,000 works of art, 80,000 color slides, negatives and photographs, as well as motion picture film. In Sudan, Ellis often discovered an artist making aluminum pendants with metal from a plane crash. He photographed a Shaluk woman wearing similar pendants on chains, an image that was featured on the cover of Life magazine. Ellis Offen's images shaped America's perception of Africa during the 20th century, and archivist Amy Staples explains why they are important. This woman is just an ordinary woman. She's not a royal person or anything, but uh, the way Ellis Offen photographed her makes her appear like she is royal, like she is heroic and larger than life. Um, and that's probably why Life picked that for the cover. Um, but it was really unusual to feature, uh, you know, an ordinary person from Africa on the cover of Life. And that, that was the iconic feature image for the story in 1947. Ellis often focused his cameras on African artisans at work perfecting their craft. He created an enduring royal portrait of the Cuba King of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The curator for collections, Berna Fryer, explains. The colonial government had taken away a lot of his power and authority, but he still was very revered by his people. So it was a big deal to get him to agree to pose for Life magazine. This isn't a snapshot. This is a carefully posed photo. The king decided that it would only be proper if he was photographed wearing his coronation robe. In 1951, Life magazine sent him to photograph the production of the film African Queen, starring Katharine Hepburn and Humphrey Bogart. The director was so impressed with his work, he hired Ellis Offen for his next film, which established him as a glamour photographer in post-war Hollywood. The archives of the National Museum of African Art is the largest repository of historical images of Africa. The exhibit is open to the public through August 2014. Carolyn Turner, VOA News.